Right, now to start off, what we need to do is to get the dog straight and I'm, I have the lead looped over my thumb just so I've still got control of it and then what I normally do is I start with the head and I just take the flues and just loosen them to make sure they're not tucked up in the lips and underneath the chin there's a groove just here which you can just pop your fingers in so from this side you can't actually see your fingers under the head they just tuck in the groove and you can just grip from this side so we just start off with the head and hold them there gently um, then we come on to the front legs and you can lift them just like this to just let their legs drop vertically down in front of them and then you can just place the feet to make sure that they are standing equally level here so you just want to get the feet directly vertical in front of them there um, stand good boy stand then you come onto the back and I just take the legs gently and lift them up and place them down you're placing them on the corners of a rectangle basically um, and then the same with this one just lift it up and pop it down as well so they're level at the back then with the lead I mean obviously you'll learn this as you go along but the lead will just be dropped onto their shoulders there so you can see the nice length of their neck and it just lays across their shoulder blade like this if you have it too far up here it makes them look straight on their shoulders and if you have it too far back it can make them look as though they've got a dip in their top line so just resting nicely on their shoulders there is fine. You want to make sure the head is level. You want the head not pointing up and not pointing down, but just as level as you can get it. And obviously this comes with time and practice. Um, so you're wanting the, basically the shoulders to look a nice slope of the shoulders so the legs are right underneath them, not straight down in front, but just nicely tucked under the body. And this, by lifting the legs and just popping them down gently. If they're a little bit stiff when they're learning, which they often are, it makes them look very straight here, um, rather than have this lovely bend, which a springer is supposed to have. That's where they get the spring from. And then the tail, you just pull out, and you, I hold it just with a couple of fingers there. And you want to hold it out. You can hold it quite tight, straight behind them, and it should be level with their back. You don't want it sticking up in the air or down too low, but just level with their back so they can see the feathering. Um, but if you pull it out a little bit, it often makes the dog stand a bit straighter as well because they sort of just stand a bit more upright. And that basically is the shape that you're trying to get. So the back legs don't want to be too far in here and they don't want to be too far overstretched, what we call overstretched. They just want to be nicely under the body there and this is supposed to be vertical as well rather than tucked in or tucked out so when you've got them stood in a nice rectangle reasonably wide behind just a little bit wider than their bottom is when you're looking from the top but not not too wide but just a reasonable you know reasonable width and the same with the front they just want to be i just turn him round turn around there's a good boy. So from the front, you just want them a nice width from the front, just uh, dropping nice and straight from the shoulders, so they're nice in line with the shoulders there. Okay, and then obviously the back ones would come in line. You want to keep the feet facing the front as well. I mean, I think Poppy looks as though she's pretty well made in the fact that her feet don't slope out. Some dogs stand at 10 to 2 like a ballerina and if you've got a dog that has a slight tendency to do that you want to make sure that you place the feet front. I mean a good judge will pick up on the fact that they may not quite stand as good when they naturally come to a stop after you've moved them but in standing them you could be clever and correct it if you have a dog that does that a little bit. And there you can see the groove is just in under the chin, just in under there. But, uh, and that just keeps your hands tucked in there. So that's basically it. You just want to uh, 
get them stood and practice a little bit every day and uh, you'll soon get the hang of doing it but by keeping the lead loose over your thumb if the dog did move you've always got hold of them but you're not supposed to put the lead down like some people do because you're not supposed to lose control of your dog you're supposed to always have the lead but you don't want it in the way either you don't want to have it dangling all around the front and down all around the feet you want to just keep it loosely up out of the way so i think that's about it to give you a start good boy winston <laughs>